This one's meat hook and elbow lever. We're working on the double rings. Uh, we just want to start with just a basic inversion when you're starting out with the meat hook. Uh, so it's important to have that nice alignment, that body awareness when you're upside down. When I teach it here, we use a mirror so people are looking back at the mirror to really try and get that sense of awareness of where they are when they're upside down. Even though it's easier to balance in a handstand, it can still be a little bit disorientating. So really try and get people to be comfortable with that. They start with kind of either going up in a tuck or a pike, uh, and then once they get more comfortable, then they can start to pike down, and then go through the different variations. So an easy entry would just be dropping down into this position, depending on how flexible someone is. So they can they pike up and get that nice line. And then from there, they might even just focus on doing a knee tuck, inverted, and get comfortable with that, the use of the blood rushing to the head. Then they can do a pipe down, and compress, try and touch, and lift up. After that, you're doing straddling one side, and then once you've got that down, then you do the double. You just want to have a nice line, and you want to really condition nerves before you bring it up to that. The double is a lot harder than splitting like that when you double on the outside. So you want to make sure that you really condition the other one. You feel nice and solid through there. Um, I find if people rush that, they always kind of pull up pretty sore. So just make sure you condition it, you're having fun, you're getting body awareness. You've got to think of all the different things that you're developing while you're doing it rather than just aiming for that end skill. Once you've got the double one down where you can come to each side comfortably and get back up, then you can work on letting one hand go. Um, obviously you're letting the hand go that's held across the body and that one's easier to let go. But Focus on just getting those nice positions, feeling that compression and being able to pull out of it comfortably and you know get through your three to five sets before you kind of rush into a heavier version. It'll come, um, but the last thing you want is you tweak it into costal muscle, which is quite common with mid hooks, and the next one, the elbow lever, uh, then you know you're gonna feel sore for a week or two or longer and it's gonna interrupt your training. So you're always gonna progress faster if you just you know, go through the basic versions, really get comfortable and strong and, and feel good doing them and then just challenge yourself that little bit when you're going further rather than going too far and making it something that's inhibiting your development. Uh, so you have a 30 second breathing rest after that. Then we go into the elbow lever on the floor. Now you want to get used to having that pressure going into your core. So you're trying to get the elbow in between the hip and the belly button and just that inner arm on that oblique line there. So it's good to do it with a pole type thing or a wall and just get used to that pressure pushing in first and you know, contracting your core, releasing, letting it sink through, contracting. If you can do that well, you, get, you, know, you feel quite comfortable with that, the, the pressure going in, and then when you go to the floor, it's not such a big jump. So when you're on the floor, you wanna make sure got that same alignment and you can really ease into it. So use this hand to decompress, use the, keep the knees on the ground and just get comfortable with that beam here. There's no rush to go into the balancing because you need that strength through the core to be able to start that process. Once you're there, then you can start to bring this arm out, come up on the toes and just get that. Then you can take one leg off, take the other leg off, get comfortable with that the arm off and then once that's there it's not such a big process of development to get the balance in this because you've got such a low center of gravity but you do want to have that stability through there before you really um, don't try and jump off the ground uh, try and feel that you can just lift off you want to feel comfortable doing it then we have a nice breathing rest after and doing uh, four sets of that um, in the class, but three to five sets really good. But yeah, just take your time, get 15 seconds aside if you're doing it on the beat. Um, and same with this one, 
usually like even if you're doing both sides, we do a center one to get up, go one side, go to the other side, and then come down, and that should take you the 30 seconds. So you get a nice chance in between to reset that rib cage. So doing deep diaphragmatic breathing and all the mobility stuff for the ribs on a roller um, with the massage ball, all the different positions are all going to help condition it. So you don't need to um, force any of this because if you, if, you do, if you find that it's too much of a jump and it's straining you too much, then you just take your time with the other things that will all come together because if you get through the whole week of training, even if you're doing it over a two week period, it's all going to develop nicely and balanced. Uh, so get into it. Uh, if you've got questions with the positions, just shoot us a video of yourself doing it and um, you know, point out what you feel the problem is and then I can let you know different things that you can do to improve it. Uh, so enjoy it, get into it.